Welcome to the Worth Listening Podcast, where we focus on having positive and productive conversations around money. I'm your host, Lauren, a four-time Olympian and certified financial planner. On this show, my guests share their money stories. Everyone has a unique story and experiences both wins and losses when it comes to money. My intent is to give listeners something they can relate to, something that builds their courage to be open and take control of their own money story. When I'm not creating a great show for my listeners, I'm running my company, Worth Winning, where I help individuals and families organize their finances. Check us out at worth-winning.com. All right, now on with the show. Well, hey, hey, welcome to solo episode three. So in solo episode two, I talked about work and all about how my childhood hustles shaped me as an adult and some of the ideals I have today. Today, I want to talk about my college years a little bit and how it all panned out for me, what I was thinking during the college time. So I'll start by telling you that in high school, I didn't really have a clear plan. The plan was definitely to go to college, but I had no idea how I was going to get there, what exactly that entailed the preparation. I did know that there was something called academic scholarships. And then if you got good grades, you got to go to college for free. And I did know that college costs something, whereas my public school, high school didn't cost anything. But I think I was a little bit naive about what the cost of college was and how I would have actually got that taken care of if I hadn't had academic monies available to me. Now that I'm older and I'm looking back on it, I know that there probably would have been a lot of grants and need-based aid available to me because we didn't have a lot of money in our household and we did have a lot of family members. So I had five sisters and two brothers and the expenses for that size family is high and and earnings were low. My dad was ill. So need-based aid would have come into the picture, but probably also some student loans if academic monies hadn't been on the table. Luckily for me, I was doing this little thing called track and field and these letters started to come in the mail. And I was like, what is this? And I was like, why do they what they know about my times and what I've done on this date and what championships and things? And that was kind of when the light bulb cut on that there was athletic scholarships in addition to academic. And I was like, oh, you guys will pay for my school if I continue to run around this circle that I already do for kicks anyway? This sounds awesome. I was still exploring the opportunity of academic scholarships, but I also now had another option on the table and far be it for me to not take advantage of those opportunities as well. So I filled out those little questionnaires carefully and looked at all the different schools and options available to me and just felt really good to know that I was being pursued for something else and that there was going to be some option for me to be able to go to school. Ultimately, I chose the University of Miami. And I'd love to say that there was a lot of meticulous research done and I was very, very fancy. But the reality was that I was 17 years old. And when I took my visit to the University of Miami, it was October in Pennsylvania. So anybody who knows about the Northeast in October, it can be cold. It is the fall time. So it's starting to get cold and sometimes it gets cold earlier than others. So I went to the University of Miami in October got sunburned in October and returned to Pennsylvania and the first frost had happened. So I figured, hmm, snow in October or sunlight and sunburn in October. This seems like a relatively easy decision to make, especially if I'm going to be required to have to run on a track in order to fulfill my obligation of getting the free education. And I never once regretted my decision to go to the University of Miami. It was a great experience, a great opportunity. It was a great school for academics, in addition to a great school for me to grow my network, my family, my friends, everybody that I'm still hanging out with nowadays. And so I got to college and I did like most people, I think, and got a credit card. But what I didn't do, like most college students, was run up a bunch of credit card debt. And I really wish I knew who had talked to me or explained it to me. I'm not sure how I knew because I hear so frequently about how you get this piece of plastic and you think it's free money or you don't understand exactly how it works or someone tells you you can pay it back later. And a lot of college students end up in credit card debt. And I know there's been a lot of changes made now to where you can't just sign up for the credit card and get the free t-shirt the way that we could. So there are some sort of restrictions being placed. But 
I was really, really fortunate to know that credit card needed to be paid in full every month. And I was super meticulous about taking my statement, saving my receipts, matching each statement to the receipt, and then looking at it and making sure all of these purchases are mine, make sure that nobody else put anything on here that I didn't do. And it kind of was a way of budgeting, even though I didn't know it. At that time, I don't think I thought of it as budgeting, but really being aware of what I was spending and what those expenses looked like on a month to month basis were kind of a lightweight sort of budget to keep some awareness around my spending. And I think it really helped shape me as an adult into someone who is very conscious on how much things cost and that you just can't swipe and go and set it and forget it. And I was really big on this idea of not owing anyone. So the credit card, I knew that if I didn't pay it, I owed someone. I didn't want to borrow $5 from a friend. I was that person that you go out to eat and you forgot your money. I'd rather be hungry than to borrow $5 and give it right back. And on the off chance that someone's like forced me to take their money and let them buy me an ice cream or whatever the case may be, I was very adamant about getting them their money the same day so that I didn't have to owe anyone. I didn't want people to feel like you were ducking and dodging. And I do remember conversations about people saying like, oh, she brought my so-and-so and she didn't give that back. Or she brought some money last week and I don't have enough money to pay for my blah, blah, blah now. And just how uncomfortable that was when people were upset with one another because they borrowed something that they didn't get back. So I didn't make it a habit of loaning things. Even with a family of five sisters and two brothers where you would think that clothes and things like that were passed around, I was very much a like, these are my things and these are yours. I'm not going to ask for yours, so do not ask for mine. And I always thought, random side note, in college, when you borrowed someone else's clothes, that was a really popular thing. And I just never really understood the point of borrowing someone else's clothes because you got saw in it last weekend wearing that. And now I get to wear it this weekend. It's already been worn and everybody's seen us in it now instead of just like you in it. So like, what's the point of borrowing someone's outfit? I just never really got it. It's like, I want to look nice in my things and I want you to look nice in your things. And even if your thing is cute, we mostly are always in the same place. So why are we wearing the same stuff? Anyways, I digress. Okay, back to the subject at hand. Another thing was my college roommate and I and how we handled money. I understood credit. I didn't like debt. And I was simply frugal because we were kind of starving college students. We moved off campus our sophomore year and I was fortunate to stay with the same college roommate for all of college. And it was wonderful, but we were both very budget conscious. She came from a family that didn't have a whole lot and was taught to be a good steward of what we got and make it stretch as far as possible. So we were always talking about strategies to make our checks last longer, to be able to put a little bit aside for something that was upcoming, to save our per diem money if we went on a trip on the road and got a little bit of extra. And now looking back on it, I realized that Everybody didn't have a good influence in that way and how awesome it was to be able to have a roommate that was kind of on the same page as me with like, let's save our money. Let's not fall till we fall. And we didn't need our hair and our nails done or the new latest this or that as it pertains to clothes and how far a good influence goes. So I just think college was a really good time for me to understand some life experiences But I also feel like college did not give me everything that I needed to be a grown up. Now I see these financial literacy classes popping up and I definitely encourage those who have those available to them to take one. But that wasn't an option when I was in school. I was actually a finance major. And as soon as I graduated college with my finance degree, I realized how very little I knew about what to actually do with money. I knew about how hedge funds worked. I knew a lot about economics and all sorts of different financial topics, but it wasn't actually based in personal finance. It didn't say anything about how to handle your monthly bills. And I'm really excited now to see financial planning as a major in many universities and also as a minor. So I always encourage people to look into that as something, even if you don't want to become a financial planner, that's still valuable information that you need that can help you organize your personal finances. So without this life experience that college gives you, it's like, what do we do? Where are we supposed to learn about investing in? It's always like this thing that was cool to talk about. Like, oh yeah, I want to make my money grow and we're trying to stack this cash and put it aside. But there are very few tangible examples of what that actually meant or how to implement those strategies. And I think we leave college and we're like, okay, we're grownups and we've got to make money and we've got goals to be millionaires and all these different things. But what are the real tangible tools that actually help money grow. And I think we need to be having more conversations about that in college and 
in life in general. I think even as adults, a lot of people are talking about, oh yeah, let's flip some houses or I'm buying this stock today because I think it's going up. And there's not a lot of information or education around the why behind what people are doing versus the let's get money sort of thing. Let's get money is great, but let's understand how to get money, I think is it's more important. So in summary, my college years were great. I enjoyed them. I made relatively good financial decisions. I wish I had talked more with my peers about money, but I had some really good influences around me and it really set me up to leave college and want to continue to be financially responsible. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about what happened after college and the the mistakes that were made. And I'm so grateful that I didn't have to have student loans, but Now, as a financial planner, one of the things that I deal with the most is student loan debt and the way that people feel crippled by their student loan debt. So I didn't have to deal with it on a day-to-day basis as a university student, but I've been engrossed in it for the last year or so as my clientele has continued to grow and people continue to reach out because they feel they're in dire straits because of their student loans. And there's so many options with student loans. If there's one thing you guys can take away from today, college may have come and gone for you and you now have this student loan debt and you're feeling like, I'm struggling. Uh, Why did I take this debt? What was the point in me doing all of this? But taking student loan debt was not a mistake. And even if it's something that you're not the proudest of, you wish you had tried something different, you wish you would have worked a little bit more, you wish you would have taken out less debt or chosen a different school, I wouldn't pause and hang out there. And so that about sums up what I thought mostly about and how I handled my college years. I think I made some good decisions. I had good influences around me and relatively unscathed by poor financial decisions during college. And I'm super grateful that I didn't have student loans, though student loans have kind of manifested themselves in a different way in my life. So it's sometimes hard for people to hear like, you didn't have student loans, but now you're trying to tell me what to do with my student loans. But Each and every day, clients are coming to me and they feel strapped by their student loan debt. And it really caused me to pause and dig in and see what are the options? Because you think, oh, debt, pay your debt back, figure out how to pay debt back. And then I kept getting clients with bigger and bigger debt and salary that didn't match that debt. And I was like, there has to be more to this. And I'm so glad that I spent some time looking more into what the options are around student loans. And there are many many, many options. And I think that's one of the things I'd love for people to take away from this is maybe you're listening and you've already borrowed. You're not on your way to college. You've already completed it. You have these student loans. You don't feel great about the fact that you have these student loans. You may even be telling yourself like, this was a mistake. How did I do this? You feel ashamed and embarrassed and there's no way out. That is what I deal with on a day-to-day basis. People who feel strapped down with debt that's insurmountable and they feel that there's no way around it. Well, good news for you. There is a way out. You just have to commit to making a plan. You can't just set the loans and forget them. Get on the payment plan that somebody on the phone gave you and just go with that. That's not the best option. What is the best option is figuring out what you can do. What's your customized plan? So if you're on the income contingent repayment, so ICR is what they call it, there's a better option than that. You're wasting money, thousands and thousands of dollars. If you're not heard about taxable forgiveness, you may be setting yourself up for financial devastation years down the road. You're on the graduated or the extended plan. You, once again, are probably costing yourself tens of thousands of dollars. By simply just paying because someone tells you to pay and it seems affordable, that's not a student loan plan. That's not a way to to really beat this debt, to demolish it and be able to move forward. You can have financial freedom in the midst of student loan debt. You can invest in the midst of student loan debt. You can save money. You don't have to live paycheck to paycheck. You just got to make your mind that this is not the thing that's going to cripple you, that this is not an excuse to live in poverty and struggle for the rest of your life. And instead, this is something you can beat. It's a decision and investment you made in yourself. That's when you took out the debt. You thought you were doing it to get an education so that you can invest in yourself in your future, right? So don't turn back on that now. It is an investment you made in yourself. And there is a way to get the return on this investment. 
And there's also a way to get financial independence and financial freedom in the midst of paying back this investment that you made. So student loans do not have to be the death of you. Reach out to someone, if not me, just some financial professional for help. Don't try and do it on your own. If you do insist on doing it on your own, you're really a do-it-yourself or you don't want to pay a dollar for anything, that is fine. Go to studentloanplanner.com and read all the articles you can. There are plenty of good articles, good information there so that you can try to do it yourself. But make sure you create something that's customized to you. Don't sit at dinner with your friends or drinks on a Friday night and hear somebody else say they refinanced. And so you just go ahead and you hit the refinance button the next morning because you're strapped and you don't know what to do and it it worked for someone else. That may not be the best option for you. You might not want to take your federal loans and turn them into private loans. That is not the best option for some people. For some people it is, but you need to know what is appropriate for you. Is an income-based repayment appropriate? Is going for taxable forgiveness appropriate? Is public service loan forgiveness appropriate? The options are limitless. So make sure that you create a plan around your student loan debt. Like I said, it's not a mistake. It was an investment and you can have financial independence. My next solo episode is all about financial mistakes. You're gonna wanna tune in to hear about some of the dumb stuff that I did financially. And many of those things led me to becoming a financial planner. So I really look forward to being able to share that with you all. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about how I handle money during my college experience. And I hope you feel inspired to deal with the aftermath of the student loan debt from your college experience. And as always, if you have questions, suggestions for guests, or you would like to share your own money memoir, Do not hesitate to reach out worth-winning.com or worth-listening.com. Need an email address? Podcast at worth-listening.com. We are happy to help you either organize your finances, answer your questions, have you as a guest on the show. Don't be shy. We'd love to hear from you.